do you feel any sense of guilt at all that as a philologist, as a professor of English language, with which you were concerned with the factual sources of language, you devoted a large part of your life to a fictional thing? No, no, actually, it doesn't make me a lot of good. You know? <laughs> no, I, I, no, no, there's quite a lot of linguistic wisdom in it. I don't feel any guilt complex about the Lord of the Rings, as many people have said. Now we know what you wasted, wasted the last 14 years of Upon you can now get on and complete some of those professional tasks which you neglected. And so, immediately after I died, I was more busy working at my proper things than I've been for a long while. Yes. Is the book to be considered as an allegory? No. no. I just like allegory whenever I smell it. Do you consider the world declining as the third age declines in your book? And do you see a fourth age for the world at the moment? Our world? Well, the person of my age, you see. He's exactly the kind of person who's um, lived th through one of the most quickly changing periods of uh, known to history. And that the world is a totally different place now, at a speed where everybody feels that. Anybody who lives over 70 begins to feel that uh, all through history. You can see that they do. But surely never been in 70 years so much change. Oh, surely never. No, this, I mean, one doesn't have to be 70 years old to appreciate this. The world which I brought up as a small child was indefinitely closer to the world, say, of Shakespeare. The, uh, there's an autumnal quality throughout the whole of The Lord of the Rings. There's a sense of continuous change. Each character feels himself to be part of a story that's forever continuing. You, in one case, um, a character says the story is continuing, but I seem to have dropped out of it. Yeah. Um, however, everything's declining and it's fading, at least towards the end of the Third Age. Every choice tends to the upsetting of some tradition. Now, this seems to me to be somewhat like Tennyson's The Old Order Changeth, Yielding Place to New, and God Fulfills Himself in Many Ways. Where is God in the Lord of the Rings? He mentioned once or twice. Is he the one above the elder? The one, yeah, the one, yeah. Despite the continuous war between evil personified in Sauron and good, you never personalise or personify goodness. Good is there, but it's totally abstract. You don't attempt to ascribe any, any um, godship to it, particularly. No, 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 it isn't a dualistic uh, mythology is based on, no, no, certainly not. But, I mean, the whole book is nevertheless nothing but the battle between good and evil. Well, that's, I suppose, an actual conscious reaction from the war, from the stuff that I was brought up in a war to end wars, that kind of stuff, which I didn't believe in at the time, and I believe in less now. If I can take this a bit further, you, you, I may make my point clearer. In battle, Frodo and Sam call on Galadriel, or their native country, Gimli calls on the ans his ancestor's axe, if I read your appendices correctly, and the men call only on their swords by name or on their kings or lords. I would expect them to call on their gods, and yet amid thousands of names, you don't name the deities of any of the races you've invented. Why? Have they no gods as such? Any. I would have thought a story of this sort was almost dependent upon an intense belief in some theocratic division, some hierarchy. There is indeed, that's where the theocratic hierarchy comes in. The man of the 20th century uh, must, uh, of course, see that you must have, whether you believe him or not, you must have gods in a story of this kind. But he can't make himself believe in gods like Thor and Odin, Aphrodite, uh, Zeus and that kind of thing. You can't believe that the men in your story would have called on Odin. I couldn't possibly construct a mythology which had... Uh, Olympus or Asgard, it is, on the terms in which uh, the people who worship those gods believed in. God is supreme, the creator, outside, uh, transcendent. But the, the place of the, uh, of the gods is taken, so well taken, I think, it, that it really makes no difference to the ordinary reader, is taken by the angelic spirits created by God, but created before the particular time sequence which we call the world, which is called in their language, yeah, that which is. That which now exists. Those are the valor of the power. It's a construction, you see, a mythology in which a large part of the demiurgic uh, thing has been, has, has been handed over to powers who are created there in under the one. It, it's something like, but much more elaborate and more thought out than uh, C.S. Lewis's business when he's uh, out of the side of the planet where you have a, where you have a demiurgos who's acting command of the, of the planet Mars. And the idea there was that Lucifer was originally the, the one in command of the world, but he fell. So it was a silent planet. It was the, it fallen out of that was the idea. Well, this is not the same with me. Yes, yes. So then you have, in your theocracy, you have 
an ultimate one, yes. whom you call... He's called the one only. The one only. Yeah. And then the Valar, yeah. who are considered as living in Valinor. This particular little group of them who were, who were removed from other parts of the universe to do this part because they became interested in it. In the book, you, I get the impression you always see power as being physically in a high place. You have a high seat. There's Orthanc, um, Medusel, Baradur, the towers of Minas Tirith, Morgul and Kirith Angol. They are always high physically up. Is power for you always, so to speak, at the top of a mountain or top well, of a Well, that's just a symbol, isn't it? Oh, no, as a matter of fact, it's just a story to anything. You want uh, towers and so on, that could have them down in the dungeon or underneath. They are, matter of fact, Morgoth, the prime mover of evil, of whom Sauron was only a petty lieutenant, lives in a dungeon. He must be in a fortress or of some kind. Not that the, not that Valinor has any high towers, just of... Well, that is almost without the world you describe, isn't it? It's in the physical world, according to the mice. Ah. Until the downfall of Atlantis. I have an Atlantis complex, in addition to all these other things. And quite independent of that, I have a permanent uh, way, uh, dream that I had, you know, let's uh, say that, say that uh, the, the ineluctable wave has been one of my nightmares, sometimes coming in over the open country. It always ends by one surrendering oneself. And one wakes up, but uh, it comes in all kinds of points. I, whenever I used to doodle and draw, it's nearly always a lone figure with the vast oceanic wave coming in there. So, of course, I had to write quite independent of these Atlantic stories, which I call Numino, which means the land of the stream west, western earth. Well, this is the fable, you see. Since the whole question of the human fall is left off the stage, naturally. It occurred, but they're not known these, since they regressed these people. They were given this great island, the first of all west, not in the, in the divine world, not in the immortal world, to live on. Uh, then, of course, we'll always come up seemingly Meaningless van, like the fruit of the tree of evil. Louis used the same thing in his Perilamba. Their ban was they mustn't sail west. They did. That's, uh, Hence the ultimate downfall. Uh, then became an intellectual. They lived there only in memory. They lived in time, but not present time. And of course, the new and all was drowned, and the earthly paradise was removed. And so then you could then get to South America. I told you the world became round. It, was, it always had been. A vast globe, but, they, but, people, but people can now sail around, discover this around. And that's where was my uh, solution of the thing. So I also wanted to give them the form of the dentist some universal application. The point is, really, I've written some story about it, in which as they get to the, you suddenly see the, the view coverage of the world going down like a bridge. You are on a line which leads to what was. Of course, if you, uh, I don't know what your theory of time is, but what was, what is, <laughs> if it ever had an existence, must, still has that same existence. But there, it's a... We won't go to. You can't go too deep in those things. But they really are sailing back to a, to a world of memory. In this world, which you might have created had you been given the power to do so, had you been one of the Valar, had you been, save the mark, God, and um, would you have created a world which is so solidly feudal as it as the Lord of the Rings? Oh yes, very much so. Yes, yes, yes. I think the feudal. I mean, uh, you mean feudal uh, in the widest in sense. The sense, not in the uh, strict way. Oh no, 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 in the widest sense. Only. Hierarchical, rather, yes. Hierarchical, exactly, yes. Yes, yes I think so. I mean, that, that power should descend by a line of kings to their oh, sons. This well, sort the of thing. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know about that. No, it's, it's, it's a very potent uh, story-making and emotive thing, but um, how far would say does really work better than any other system in, uh, in looking at the history of the world? One doubts pretty much. It's never been worse, at any rate, than the... And the, 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 the struggle for power always ensues when you haven't got some line of descent which can't be, can't be questioned. You're, you're, you're wedded to the feudal system, in a sense. Not, I don't mean the, the medieval feudal system, but the idea of, of, of power descending through, through um, blood or through marriage. Or... Yes, I'm rather wedded to those kind of loyalties because uh, I think, contrary to what most people, I think that um, touching your cap the square may be damn bad for the square, but it's damn good for you. Do you find a continuing interest in the Lord of the Rings by people? Pe do people still write to you, on, or despite the fact that the book's been out for ten years? Dozens of letters a week, yeah. Or they have to keep a secret to answer them, yeah. mm. Were you surprised at, it, at its success? Nobody would be more staggered, you know. <laughs> Unless it was possibly Sir Stanley Adman. I was up at uh, Stanley Adman's um, birthday celebration, and a, a bookseller came up to me. I don't usually agree to such fair, but he said that I'd... Uh, while he got <laughs> copied, it sold so well, he practically kept him going for a while. <laughs> well, he gets his guinea off the set, you see. 
almost the last question. Um, do you, in fact, believe yourself, not in the context of this book, but believe in the sense of straightforward, strict belief, in the Eldar or in some form of um, governing... Well, the Eldar must be distinguished from the Eldar. The Eldar only... Uh, the Valar, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um... Are you, in fact, a theist? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Roman Catholic. Devout Roman Catholic, yes. But uh, I don't know about angelology. Yes, I should have thought almost certainly. I, I mean, they, 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 yes, certainly. Well, they seem to me to be the saints, or the equivalent of the saints. Well, they are in some way, yes. They, yeah. they take the place in this book of the uh, things which in, in many evil and older legends you have the gods and, uh, and the invocation to the saints, which are lesser angels. It says. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh, well, of course, obviously many people have noticed that the... the being to the Lady of the Queen of the Stars, which is almost like Roman Catholic of the Invocations of Our Lady. Do you wish to be remembered chiefly by your writings on philology, on other, other matters, or by the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit? I shouldn't have thought there was very much choice, and if I remember at all, it would be by the Lord of the Rings, I'd take it. Uh, I wouldn't mind the other being remembered, but I am conscious of the... the Small and not very important. It won't it be rather like the case of Longfellow, won't it? They remember, people remember Longfellow wrote Hiawatha and perhaps one or two other things. They quite forget he was a professor of modern languages.